To start, I was diagnosed in 2001, right after returning from Ethiopia, Eritrea. Uh, things weren't right. Uh, went to see a counselor. Um, said a couple of things that uh, made her feel like I need to be talking to um, to somebody else, and that's how I got referred into uh, um, basically to get that diagnosis. So essentially, uh, I was diagnosed with. Uh, an operational stress injury with post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, along with major depressive disorder and adjustment disorder. Um, you know, when I was a young man, just started my career at this point, and to be, uh, to receive that diagnosis was, uh, that was a huge shock. And it was, uh, you know, uh, basically feeling like my career is over before it's even begun. Um, so immediately I started to manage it and I started to manage it so that I could stay operationally fit, so that I could deploy, so that I could continue, continue to work. Um, and I did, you know, I, I did manage to, to, to keep myself operationally uh, deployable. Um, you know, deployed in 2008 to Afghanistan, you know, I'd been promoted, uh, went on to have a very fulfilling career. Um, you know, I was very, I was honest enough with my care providers to help me manage uh, the injury and manage my struggles, but I never really came out and said how, how affected I was by them. You know, I never, uh, I never truly expressed how much I struggled and that continued right on, right up until the day I released, uh, even after admitting that, you know, things were we're going terribly wrong. Uh, even after admitting that, I still wasn't quite open and honest about it. So I'm, that's what I'm going to uh, endeavor to be here. Um, so yeah, I got the diagnosis, um, and from there, essentially, you know, I, I noticed that I was very withdrawn. Uh, not at work. At work, I was the same same guy, cracking cracking jokes, smiling all the time. Um, I remember having my medical officer say to me, you know, you couldn't believe I was diagnosed with PTSD because I was the life of the party. Um, but there it was. Um, so, you know, some of the things I've, I've experienced, um, being withdrawn, especially, uh, friends and family, you know, in the, in the quiet time when I'm not working, um, trouble sleeping, trouble going to sleep, trouble staying, staying asleep, um, uh, Dreams, I won't call them nightmares, uh, but disturbing dreams. Um, and definitely things that, that I carry with me after I wake up. Um, you know, uh, I've struggled with addiction off and on. Um, and I really, there are precious few people I've ever told that. Um, and that's something I've always been deeply, deeply ashamed of. And... Um, yeah, um, you know, trying to manage it and trying to stay operationally deployable meant I'm, I'm just, I was guarded all the time. You know, there was always these walls up there. Um, and to the outside world, I appeared okay, but in the quiet moments and when I was alone, you know, I just completely break down. Um, and I know it's probably that way for a lot of us, you know, um, we go to different places and we experience some, some exceptional things. And I mean that in good and bad ways. Um, but I found being on deployment, I was either, you know, uh, I was either kind of angry or jacked up to 10, ready to go. Uh, or I was kind of flat. There was no other emotion really, you know, there's nothing in between. Um, and I know that's, you know, the subconscious mind shutting down. It's, it's a, uh, you know, it's, it's a protective measure. Uh, the problem is when you come home, that's when things go bad. You know, suddenly those emotions are coming to the surface going, okay, we got to deal with this. And, you know, I lived in denial of those emotions for, for 16, 17 years. Um, like I think many of us do, you know, um, I've missed so much, you know, of my kids' lives and some of that was while I was deployed, 
you know, and, and that comes with the job. But most of it has been the rest of the time when I just can't connect with people. Um, you know, personal relationships, um, I, can't, I, I can't maintain them. Um, you know, I've, I've had essentially th three ex-wives, you know, um, four significant relationships that have, that have failed uh, pretty spectacularly. Um, you know, the guilt and the shame that that comes from um, PTSD. Um, it just, you know, and, and, and it, it just keeps everybody at arm's length. And really, you know, I kind of always said, uh, I don't suffer from PTSD. It's the people who love me you do, and, and they have. Um, you know, I'm still, still not connected the way I want to be. I, I don't know how. Um, you know, and, and this, uh, this winter, I was, I was at my dad's for Christmas, and he said, he said, you know, we love you. Um, you know, me, your mother. Um, and we'll do anything we can to help you. And what I said to him was, I don't even know what to ask for. Um, I think a lot of us are notoriously terrible for asking for help because it's that admission of weakness. It's that admission that, you know, things aren't okay. Um, and then even if we get to the point of asking for help, what do, what do we even ask for? Um, you know, and, and that was certainly true of me. Um, I became a workaholic. Um, rather than try and work my way through my issues, uh, I just lost myself in work. I kept myself in that comfort zone, you know, um, 12, 16 hour days, um, you know, and <laughs> the people I worked for said, hey, man, you're doing an amazing job, you know, uh, this is great. Um, but really it was just me hiding, hiding from my family, hiding from uh, my injuries. And again, I think a lot of us do that. Uh, I was a chronic overachiever, you know. Um, if I went on a course, I, I had to be top candidate, you know, or certainly, certainly within the top two or three. And that was pretty much the experience, you know, every, every uh, career course I've ever been on. Um, and there's a desire to excel. There's a desire to, um, to do well in everything I did. But if I'm going to be honest, that was just to hide crippling insecurity. Um, always lived in fear of being outed um, as being weak and incapable. Um, constantly living in fear of being deemed undeployable and unable to, to do my job in an operational capacity. Um, so yeah, that was just uh, uh, a whole lot of overcompensating and, um, and, and hiding in my work. Um, you know, I feel like an absolute burden and disappointment to my family. Um, You know, I, I haven't stayed in touch. Uh, I know I'm still distant, um, still have trouble connecting, um, you know, and, and I had it pointed out to me very, pretty unceremoniously at one point that, you know, I would do more for my army buddies than I would for my own family. Um, and you know, it's, uh, it's hard to admit that's true. Um, because I can connect there. I, I, you know, I can't, just can't seem to connect otherwise. Um, so yeah, uh, sorry. You know, uh, so yeah, managing things. Uh, pardon me. Uh,
you know, managing things and, and, and just keeping going and um, hiding in my work, disregarding my family, not staying connected with friends. Um, you know, it just, it eats, it eats away at your soul. Um, you know, I, I definitely, um, you know, carry a lot of guilt and shame uh, about, about that. Um, sorry. <sighs> yeah. Um, I, I definitely carry a lot of guilt and shame about that. And I don't know, you know, um, wearing the uniform, it was this buffer, you know, because then I was Corporal Terry or Master Corporal Terry. I wasn't, I wasn't Mike. I wasn't me. Um, I was just this persona, you know, of, of a soldier who, um, you know, stiff necked and untroubled. Um, that really started to get stressed. You know, those coping mechanisms started to fail uh, pretty early on in 2012 when I changed trades. Um, I didn't realize how much my regimental family kept me together. Um, you know, the comradeship, the peer leadership, uh, the mentorship, all of it. Um, you know, that uh, common goal and common focus, um, that really uh, was holding me up more than I was. And when it left, it left a big hole. Um, I was very fortunate the first few years as an image tech. Uh, I worked for Sergeant Paul McGregor and then Sergeant Mary Michelko. And both of them came from a combat arms background. Both of them probably don't know it, but they were, they were the anchor. Um, they were what was kind of keeping me uh, in the game. And, you know, finally, uh, Mary left in 2016 and I just fell apart after that. I just couldn't, couldn't keep it together. And still, you know, still living in denial. Uh, it wasn't until uh, about a year ago in 2017 that I walked into the clinic in Borden and I saw a, uh, a nurse or a medical officer and finally said, hey, uh, I can't do this, you know. Um, and that's probably the first time I've ever been in uniform and allowed myself to show that vulnerability. And it was, uh, it was shameful. It was, it was humbling. Um, but it was, it was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. And immediately though, I felt, I felt that weight come off, you know. Um, I didn't realize how long I lived with it. <laughs> Pardon me. <clears throat> yeah, I, I felt that weight come off, you know. I, I didn't know how long that I'd been living with, with that burden. Um, so that, that pretty much started my journey to release, um, that, you know, uh, and even though I finally kind of outed myself, I still wasn't, you know, I was still going in to, to my appointments and saying, yeah, I had this struggle, this struggle, this struggle, but this is what I did. So I reasoned everything out before I got to that appointment and I walked in and out of the doors, like kind of saying, yeah, everything's okay. Uh, when it wasn't and uh, you know, it, it got to be that they started to see through that and um, But yeah, it's a huge step just trying to open up and um, I'm still working at being open and Honest with myself and with others um, And I'm, I'm really hoping that's one of the things that's going to come from um from this journey. I want to thank you for tuning in. Uh, I'll be carrying on uh, this story in the next video. And I want to thank everybody for all the support I've been receiving so far. Um, you know, people are uh, sharing posts, sharing videos. Uh, people are getting in touch to talk about sharing their story. Uh, people have been donating to the GoFundMe page and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. 
So speaking of all those things, you know, if you want to help me out, please like, please share, please subscribe. Uh, and if you can, if you hit up the GoFundMe page, the link is down in the description. You know, anything that you do uh, is truly appreciated and, and helps. Thank you.